Hello and welcome to a new series on Bite Size Irish called Keshtana Casta, in which we're going to discuss some of the tricky questions about the Irish language. Is Mission Neil? August is Mission Ben. So, Ben, and, uh, what do we have for our first question? Okay, so we like to talk about ourselves. And the first question today is there are four different ways to say I am in Irish. So can you tell us about them there? Yeah, well, the first way is probably the first thing that occurs to people when they think of I am uh, coming from English to Irish. And that is, as I would say, Tame or Tame or even Tame. Tame is just the same thing, really. So that's the most obvious answer to people. So how would you characterize Tame, Ben? What does that, in what situations would you say Tame? That would be a situation in the present tense where you're talking about your present state there. Yeah, something now, yeah, at mm. this moment. I think that's mm. fair to say. But we can contrast it with another form of this verb ta, another form of this verb be, you should say, which is beam. Now, this would also be I am in English, but a lot of Irish people would say I, I do be or I be mm. for this. So the difference between tame and beam is a very important one. And it's one that people tend to confuse a little bit or or maybe they tend to forget beam, I think, um, at times. So what would you say is the difference, uh, Ben? What, how, how do we use beam? If tame means it's right now, beam. Yeah. So um, tame, we're talking about your present state. Tame sauce. I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. I might not be satisfied forever. Um, Beam, we're talking about routine. We say beam sauce the gach ine. I'm satisfied every Friday <laughs> because the weekend is gone. So or beam satach thorne gach ine. I do be in the pub every Friday. So beam is for routine and ta is for what's happening right now. Yeah. yeah, so beam is the present habitual tense. So it's something habitual, something that happens frequently, often, regularly in some way. So if it's every Friday, like you say, or um, every week, be um, uh, And again, like Irish people tend to say, I do be. The doobies. So yeah. Two examples of I am. Both of those would be I am in English, in standard English. But you might use a, an, an adverb frequency kind of phrase like often I am. But uh, be um, gominic. However, there are four ways. And the other two ways are uh, relating to the other verb, is. So on chapel, or the copula, also means be. So this is another complication because we don't have this different verb in English. But the third example of I am is is me. So is muntor me, is erinach me, is far me. I am a teacher, I am an Irish person, I am a man. Marhamla. So uh, for saying who you are or what you are, um, for saying I am a, if you like. Things that are enduring, they might change. You might change your nationality, but it's unlikely. Um, yeah. yeah, and we can certainly change our job, but that's what you are for this time, uh, the, um, for the time being. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly permanent, I could say. It's hard to... I to say 100% uh, in Irish. Um, so is something may, I am a. But there's a variation that I think, um, again, it's tricky to catch or people are not quite aware of. And this is um, Ivericahar, is misha something. So instead of um, the, the noun, the word being in the middle, it's at the end now, is misha x. This would be familiar to people from giving your name. Is Misha Neil? We've already said that today. So how is this one different to Is Something May, Ben? Well, um, this is an emphatic form of may there, and you might use it in soliciting information that hasn't been sought, for instance. If you're introducing mm. yourself, Is Misha Neil. Nobody's asked you mm. um, who you are. 
and so it's just putting an emphasis on that you might use it um if you're trying to emphasize that you are the something rather than mm. a something. so mm. is muntor me i'm a teacher is mish a muntor i am the teacher yeah so yeah that's right. i think that's the big difference because again in english you can say i am a teacher i am the teacher in irish of course we don't have a word for a mm -hmm. uh, we do have the word for the we have on but we don't say is on mentor may that doesn't happen because that's teacher. like saying, I am yeah. the teacher that's very odd mm -hmm. so the word order is showing us if something is indefinite or definite yeah number mm -hmm. three is token. Mm -hmm. yeah number well. three was indefinite um is mentor may i am a teacher but number four is misha on mentor i am the teacher that's a definite role position you might have something else that makes it definite, like a like a proper noun, like a person's name. I am uh, Neil Marhampla, mm -hmm. or some other phrase that's very definite and, and like that, what we would say, kinche in Irish. Mm -hmm. So four ways to say I am. We have fame, beam, is something may, or is misha something. Okay. So, to follow up from follow on from that, Ben, I have a question for you, and that is, how do you answer copula questions? Questions. Yeah. So, oh. indeed. Um, so this is related to what we were just talking about. Um, and I suppose if we look at those questions in English, it might help people to understand what's going on when we answer them in Irish. So taking this first question here, on air and the who. Mm -hmm. So you're going to answer that sha for yes or ni ha for no. And the reason is that it's asking about whether you are an Irish person. So it's like, is it an Irish person you are? And you're answering it is it isn't, not I am or I am not, because the question is, is it an Irish person? You are. It is, it isn't. So, so after the word word an, an, we have Erenach. The second word after An is Erenach, and that's mm -hmm. the word we're focusing on for our answer. Exactly. Sha. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the second one there, on e Gronje and Banishtor is Gronje, the manager. We're asking, a question about the pronoun e mm -hmm. there so we're answering is is e her so she is for yes and ni is not e her she is not for the negative so we say that is e as she and mm -hmm. then ni he then uh, for the negative so on air nahu sha yes ni ha no Mm -hmm. uh, on uh, on Igrania and Banishtor, she and Nihi there. And you know, answering, sorry, go ahead. In answering the first question, we don't need our pronoun it's specified in the question, and that's a convention in Irish is that you don't need the pronoun in answering the question, it's specified in the question, so you don't need to repeat yeah. it. I believe it's, that. So, yeah, is a, is a little old um, neuter pronoun, but we don't need to worry about that at all. It's okay. A word. Okay. So, but we just say sha miha for that one. So again, this is an erinachu. It links into the previous question because an erinachu, are you an Irish person? Um, that's an indefinite question, you know. Is erinach me? That's are you an Irish person using the word an? But ani granya an banishtor is Granny the manager. There's no ah there. It's very definite, uh, you know, that person and that role. So, an Erenachu, are you ah? Sha miha. So, if it's are you ah, you're asking, the answer will always be sha miha. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, it's, if it's plural, like, um, I don't know, an Erenin with, are we Irish people? Um, then it will be sha miha as well, but it's still indefinite. Mm -hmm. 
But if it's definite, an e grania and banish door, she li he. And it could be maybe a more common example is Antosa. You know, <laughs> are you the manager? Antosa and banish door. Mm. How, how would you answer that, Ben? Antosa and banish door. It's me. It's me, or or Nime, as it would be. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, in my case. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this difference there, it does relate into that question of whether we have um, a definite noun or an indefinite noun. And a, a definite noun is someone's name, or it has the word an for the, um, mm -hmm. or something else very specific like that, like uchteran neheran. President mm -hmm. of Ireland, that's a very specific role. So that's definite. Mm -hmm. An indefinite noun would have a in English. So a man, a dog, a cat. Um, so a big issue that comes up. Okay, well, we'll move from uh, the copula and grammar questions over to pronunciation now. So Ben, about pronunciation. Yes, something that people ask from time to time. How do you pronounce the letter N when it follows another consonant? Um, yeah, so I guess I should really answer this because uh, I'm the one who has to explain myself, I suppose, because I believe in, in Monster Irish, uh, the pronunciation, it really seems a lot more phonetic, I'd have to say, and I don't speak Monster mm -hmm. Irish. I have to give them that. It seems more phonetic. So for the beginner... You read some of these words, such as um, the word for hill, or the word for business, or women, or uh, one of the words we use for, for hope and expectation. So, C N O C. How would you say that, Ben? For hill? As it's written there, knuck. Mind you, we have a little bit of that extra knuck, knuck, knuck. And the word for business, G N O, father? Gno, uh, gno. And the word for women, M N A, father? No, no. And then this this word that we use for um, I'm one of the ways to say I'm looking forward to or hoping, T N U Fada T H. Ignu, ignu. Listen, and I'm your father. So you might be thinking, folks, well, that's just how it's written. So that's what I mean. However, in Ulster Irish and in Connacht Irish too, this N. Uh, it does something funny, all right. So after another consonant, like our question mentioned, um, this N sounds like an R. So instead of knuck, in Ulster and Connacht, we say crook, crook, believe it or not. And after gno, uh, after G, instead of gno, we say grow, grow. And after M, instead of mna, we would say well, in Ulster we say mra, but in Connacht it's mra, but it sounds like an R either way. And again, this word T N U T H T N U Fada T H, instead of tnu, we say true, true. Like, uh, um, I know this much is true, almost. <laughs> um, so that is a dialect question, basically. And um, yeah, I think it's fair to say that Munster has the most clear pronunciation rules um uh, or the spelling well, yeah that's it's true but it's kind of swings and roundabouts because for here mm. it's very clear but at the same time mm. you could say this sort of epithetic vowel in knuck knuck rather than knuck knuck and the other thing is that we have things like the word for forget you would have dharmuth and we have daruth yeah um, which doesn't sound and um tosnu rather than tosu and things like yeah. that some of that's to do with the standardization of spelling as well, I suppose. Well, I think all, all dialects have um, uh, local versions and ways to say things. There's a lot of variation in general. Mm -hmm. um, but for this one particular point, uh, yeah, it's a dialect question. Um, in Ulster and Connacht, CN sounds like CR, GN sounds like GR, MN sounds like MR, and TN sounds like TR. If you're not particularly adhering to Ulster or Connacht Irish, you might just want to go with the more phonetic way and say Knuck, Gno, Gno, Gno. So I'm magnanimous enough to say that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> another question for you. 
And um, what is the difference between Ma August Da? As we would say in Ulster, Ma and Da, but that's um, that's just what I call my hair. <laughs> um, Ma and Da. <laughs> but uh, Ma August Da, of course, they both mean if. So that's that's the crux. Why do we have two words for if? Well, that's a good question. It's a kind of a philosophical issue, I suppose. In English, you just have if, and then you work your way around it with the yeah. verbs and various bits of grammar. In Irish, we have two words for if. Uh, we have ma, and that's used when talking about realistic situations. And then mm -hmm. we have da, which is for talking about hypothetical situations. Mm -hmm. And they're combined variously with different tenses, depending on how that makes sense. So um, if ma is the realistic one, the realistic mm -hmm. if, like something that, that could probably happen or did happen, um, yeah. which tenses would we use with that? Well, you use it with the present tense um, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about the future. So you say um, ma augum, lua, if I leave early, and then you need to put some adverb of time at the end, nocht, for instance. Mm -hmm. If I leave early to nocht, if I leave early tonight, then, you know, I get a good night's sleep, let's say. And that sounds to me like something that's quite possible, quite realistic, like, yeah, maybe it will happen. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then um, we'll also use it for the ordinary past tense, as in something that actually happened in the past. So... If I left early last night, um, mm -hmm. now that sounds like a bit of a funny example, um, but let's say somebody got really, really drunk and they couldn't remember what time they left last night. <laughs> uh, if I did leave early last night, I don't remember it. You know? um, and then the is going to be used for um, hypothetical situations. So First of all, um, the ordinary conditional. So, da walkin lua enocht. If I do leave early tonight, if I were to leave, were I to leave early tonight? Yeah. So again, with English, it's uh, um, but that's talking about what would happen if it sounds leave. less sounds less likely. It sounds like you're not the sort of person who leaves early. You know, <laughs> sometimes. Mm. Um, on Thursday night, I probably would leave early. Yeah. Um, so, da vo khin lua anok. And then we have a thing called the past uh, subjunctive, which is like the conditional in the past tense. And you're talking about what would have happened if you had left early last night, if you had have, you know, maybe you didn't leave early and you didn't get a good night's sleep. If I had have left early last night, I would have got. A good we can express a lot of regrets with this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and here you're using the and you're using uru, and then you're using um, the past habitual. So, the vogin. The There's a very small the... spelling difference there. The, in the exactly. moment, there's a little yes. f, and in the past exactly. habitual, yeah. there's no f there. Complicated by it's not even saying that f. So, the vog. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a subtle enough thing. But ultimately, ma is for real situations. If I win the lotto, I will buy a unicorn, let's say, for instance. If I were to win the lotto, I would buy a unicorn. Yeah. And one if could I say that both the lotto and unicorns are on the less likely end of the scale. <laughs> so maybe, maybe even more realistic than that, like, uh, um, you know, if I have the time, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. You know, something quite possible. Mm -hmm. If I had the time, I would do it. Yeah. 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 And then, so we have these two ifs, tho and ma, but in the negative, we just have one form for them, which is mora. Mora. Um, and it's quite interesting as well that uh, we've given a few examples, but after after ma, the one, the realistic one, we always have shevu. Mm -hmm. uh, I just said ma ta, but in those forms, ta doesn't take shevu. But yeah, so that's in the present. Ayen he may, and so on. Ma with shevu, 
on Da with Uru, you did mention that, so Davaki, yeah, one, yeah. and then the negative for both of them is Mura, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and that also takes Uru, indeed. And then with more in the past tense for things that actually um, did happen in the past tense, then the form of the verb is staying the same as it would be in the past tense. So, well, it's shaped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, just a note about that word mura. So if not, if I didn't, or if I wouldn't, or if I hadn't. Um, often people pronounce it as mana. Did you have mana in Kerry growing up or mura? It's mana in Kerry, yeah. And so when I started to hear mura, I was a bit confused. And you start to think, is that some other element of grammar that I'm not aware of, you know. I would need to just... check, but I no, it's not. It's the same thing, but no. I would need to check. But um, I feel like we had Mura as well. That's the one that occurs mm -hmm. to me more readily. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, some of these letters like R can be a little bit R and N and L. They're often in a little batch where they get mixed around together a little bit. So, um, yeah, I think a linguist would say there's, it's not the biggest jump in the world to jump between R and N. It isn't indeed, but when you consider that mona becomes moner in the past tense, mm -hmm. where an or like that means something, you start to wonder if that difference between n and or means something. It doesn't. Mura and mona are the same thing, but it can be confusing when people are having to deal with all these little variations. So as as learners, I think it's uh, good to yeah. understand that mona and mura are just the same. Thing. Yeah, you might hear mona or mura, and mura is the one which is more standard. But um, yeah, you know, people want so to these, indeed. So these maws and daws can be combined with the copula as well. That's the other thing. So maw is becomes moss, and daw is becomes daw mo. So moss mean lat, if you wish. And then we would have in the conditional doma vien lat. Um, doma vien lat, if you had, mm. if you had wished, let's say. Yeah. Um, so, and da with is become. That's the past there, sorry. Yeah. Um, dhamma, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just show that one for people who were watching online. Um, yeah. So, so dhamma being that if you have had wished. Da, dhamma being them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the headline then is uh, Ma is realistic circumstances and Da uh, for more imaginary situations. Yeah, or hy yeah, hypothetical, I suppose. Yeah. Hypothetical, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And uh, in English, the funny thing is that uh, if you think about English grammar, when it's hypothetical like that, we often use the past tense. You say, if I had money. But Many people struggle with this in English. Yeah. And mm. It can be. I think it can be sometimes a bit more difficult to be clear about what it is that you mean in English. Okay. Um, but just to say that if we're using mo and we have if, that it's mo in both parts of the sentence. So, dan meyu an tamogam, if I, if I would have the time, um, yen hine, I would do it. You know, mm -hmm. in both parts of the sentence. Um, yeah. Okay, gamai. Nish kesht ella, and we'll move from uh, verbs to nouns. So kesht war and shaw a ben. Yes. So people don't want to walk around with the dictionary in their pocket all the time, checking uh, the gender of nouns. So can you give them any hacks there on how you know the gender of a noun? So how do you know the gender of a noun? Indeed. Um, well, I mean, we, we are literally walking around with the dictionary because your phone can find it for you. And on the other side is if if you were looking at the word <clears throat> or hearing it in a sentence, you have all the context clues from things which happen like shevu and so on. Okay, if you know those rules, it's very clear if it's masculine or feminine. But if you just look at the noun and all you see is the simple word with nothing else, um, is there any way to guess? Yeah, there's a few exceptions, but there's a general guideline. The first step is we look at the ending of the noun. And if it finishes with a broad consonant, let's say far from man, it finishes with a-r, broad consonant. 
then it's most likely a masculine noun and fire is a masculine noun, of course. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the opposite of that, if you look at a word and there is a slender uh, consonant there, let's say, um, give the example of cash for cheese, which finishes with is, slender consonant, most likely a feminine noun. And then if we don't finish with a broad or a slender consonant, if we finish with a vowel, let's say ishke, it's most likely masculine again. Now that ought to cover every word that we have, but there are exceptions. And first off, there's, there are some huge groups of nouns which all have the same ending, some very familiar endings. And these are exceptions. But because they're exceptions, we know they just break the rule that we, we've just described. So for example, there are a lot of words with which finish with I, father, N, in the most typical kind of Irish sound of all time, possibly. And even the word Italian, which means girl. Um, so uh, every in word is actually a masculine noun. Um, so that's just part of that typical group. Another group which is which is masculine but looks like it should be feminine is words for jobs and um, professions, things like that, which finish with IR. So IR ought to be feminine, but when it's a job or profession or role like that, like this example, Ashtor, actor, those are all masculine nouns. So you would say Antashtor, the actor. Um, some groups which are feminine but have a broad consonant at the end include words that finish with og, so fwinog, marhample, or window, with og at the end, feminine noun, and the words that finish with lun, l-a-double-n, for a place where something happens, marhample, bielen, all feminine again, and maybe one of the biggest groups is long nouns which finish with ak, so I will choose a maniacht as uh, an example hurling a maniacht it's o c h t sometimes these long words have a c h t but either way it's a broad ending but these are all feminine nouns um geiltacht is my go-to example for this because of course when we see the famous sign at the geiltacht it says an geiltacht we can see the shave of feminine noun and the radio station Radio no geiltachta, that's behaving mm -hmm. as a feminine noun in the Tishal Ginejah. Mm -hmm. So these are big, big groups. And then there's just a few other little words which are exceptions. The word cloch used to catch me out an awful lot. Cloch meaning stone, C-L-O-C-H, um, broad consonant. It doesn't fit any typical groups, but it is a feminine noun. And there's a few mm -hmm. other exceptions out there too, of course. We have the word kolacht. Kolacht, yeah, yeah, for a company. Um, despite having the acht ending, it is masculine noun. And there's a few more, but um, I think it's probably better to focus on the, the bigger rules rather than the exceptions, first of all. Mm -hmm. So I always think first stage, um, is it a broad, slender consonant at the end or a vowel at the end? And then second thing to look out for, does it, does the word have one of these typical endings like og or lun or acht or in? Um, there might be a couple of more examples like that. That's a very quick take on it. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, you can always check your folklore or changlan uh, to work that out. So when you're looking at Irish around you, it's worth thinking, do I reckon that word looks like a masculine or feminine noun? And of course, sometimes we can tell if there's a shavu or something like that too. Indeed. So I suppose, as you say there, if if you're not the one who's generating the word and putting the sentence together, there are various different ways of working it out. But if you're the one who's generating it, if you're the one who's combining it with um, you know adjectives or whatever, then yeah, if you're, if you're writing the something and you think, do I need a shavu or not? Um, what does the, what do I think this word is masculine or feminine? You might give a, a very good guess. Mm -hmm. 
And our last question here today, Ben, is um, kind of a related question. And it, it's about the word pain, which we use in questions. So when do we have shevu after the word kain? Because we say kain fa, but we say kain khush. Sometimes we might have shevu after it, and sometimes we don't. Yeah. So this goes back to what happens to the noun after the definite article on. So um, with a singular feminine noun in the nominative, you will have the shevu. With the singular masculine noun, you won't have the shevu. And this word cane is a combination of the word k, c e father, which means what or which, and the definite article on a n. And so they've been squashed together to make this word, which means what the or which the. So what the reason? It's essentially, so the same it, rule that we have when we just use on. Is it exactly so whatever happens to the noun after on meaning the t-h-e in english the exact same thing will happen after cane so that's why we say cane for and cane whoosh with mm -hmm. the shave or with words that begin with a vowel we'd have cane town for the masculine and we'd have cane mm -hmm. there for the feminine so what time well whether what what time can be said can i'm sure as well because i'm mm -hmm. sure to me mm -hmm. time there. so hey, that's a mark, 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 mark. simple enough but you know yeah. unless it's explained to you, you could be scratching your head trying to work out when do i put in a shave after cane so that's what's yeah going on there uh, again these things are not random uh but cane uh, it has the word on in it so it's the same yeah. rules said which man which woman we would have cane far cane van is doha indeed Indeed. Okay. Well, Grimila Magad Ben, um, that's all oh. for today, folks. But uh, if you have some other similar questions, which it's hard to find a straight answer to, things which are Itoni Gerdabert, things which are bothering you as you're learning Irish, do send them in to us and we might have a chance to deal with those in a future um, edition of Keshtana Kasta. So, Grimila Magad, Augustus Slanlith. Anava, Slangafoe.